Hey guys, we're going to take a look at a commercial service calculation. I've included this in my crash course series because it's not one I'm going to go into a lot of depth on, but I am going to give you every step that you need to go through this service calculation for a, in this case, it's going to be a restaurant and we're going to go fairly quickly through it. If you do want a more in-depth look at it, or you want to know why or where I'm getting the information from in the code book, please visit my other video, which is on commercial service calculation deep dive as part of my deep dive series. And that's where I really get into the nitty gritty and ferret out every little piece of information and code article and then explain the reference and what it means and why it applies. And you can get a lot of detailed information there. But for this video, we're just going to go through this and I'm going to show you how to use the chart I've developed and it really works out well. Now, remember we're in the 2020 code here, but most of this is going to apply to several, if not many code cycles going backward because they just don't do that many changes to article 220. So again, I'll have the link at the end of the video for the deep dive series. Okay. First off, I'm going to show you the table that I've developed and I will explain real quickly how it works. And then we'll get into the example and work through it piece by piece and use the data we've got. Okay. First, you're going to take the square footage of your building. Then you're going to find out what the multiplier is to use for that occupancy type. And you put your multiplier here, then you'll get your minimum lighting load. After that, we're going to establish if we have a demand factor, we can apply to that through table 220.42, put that there, and that'll give us our lighting demand load. Once we've got that, we're going to go into our show window lighting and our track lighting and our sign and outline lighting, then on to our reciprocal loads and get the demand factor for those. And then once we have those, we're going to add up all these cells here and get a subtotal. We're going to slide that subtotal right up here to the next column. And then we're going to get into our other loads as they apply. And these are a lot of various loads as is detailed in 220.14 A through E and K through M. And then we'll get into our kitchen equipment, get our demand factor for the kitchen equipment, especially this being a restaurant. Um, that's going to be important. It's going to be a big factor in our calculation. That'll give us our kitchen equipment demand. Then we'll get to our heating and our cooling, take account of our non-coincident loads, and then our largest motor. And once we have those values, we'll just total everything up and get a total building VA. Then we can divide by our voltage, taking into account what phasing it is, single phase or three phase, typically three phase for a restaurant. And that'll give us our amps and that's our service size. All right, this is our example. We've got a restaurant, 7,200 square foot building. We have eight four foot sections of track lighting, 70 feet of show window, got receptacles, ceiling fans, exhaust fans, AC unit, hood fan, got some hand dryers. The heating and the grills are gas, so that's important. Then we have our kitchen equipment all listed out here. And then lastly, it tells us our service is 120, 208 volt, three phase. So we want to find out what our total calculated service load is. All right. So what we're going to do, we have all of our data over here and we're just going to apply that data to our table. So we're going to start in the left column and start with the square footage of the building. Our building is 7,200 square feet. So we're just going to put 7,200 right there. And I have the code references here, by the way, for each step along the way. So if you have any questions, you can go to these code references or again, if you need explanation, please go to my deep dive series and I explain exactly what's going on at each step. Okay. Then what we're told to do is go to table 220.12 to find our multiplier. So we're going to go over here 220.12 general lighting loads by non-dwelling occupancy. So we're going to go through here, this list of occupancy types, and we're going to figure out where ours falls. Well, we happen to have one that exactly says restaurant right there. So a restaurant tells us that we have a one, 0.5 volt amp per square foot multiplier. So for every square foot, we got to multiply one and a half. So 7,200 times one and a half comes out to 10,800 VA. And that is our minimum lighting load. Okay. Next, we got to figure out if we have any demand factor we can apply to this minimum lighting load. So we're told to go to table 220.42, which is right over here. Lighting load demand factors. So we're going to go down we see dwelling units and that's not us hotels, motels, and apartment houses. Nope. That's not us warehouses. No. So we're going to fall under all others because restaurant is not called out here. 
we're, it's going to fall under the all others category and it tells us that our demand factor is 100%. So we get no break on our minimum lighting load. So our lighting demand load is 10,800 VA. All right, moving on to show window lighting. It tells us if we go to 220.43a that we have to take our show window lighting at 200 VA per linear foot of show window. So let's see, we have 70 feet of show window in our example. So we're gonna multiply 200 times 70 and that gives us 14,000 VA, but we have to add an extra 25% to this because it is a continuous load, meaning it operates at more than three hours at a time. And so we got to add an extra 25%. That extra 25% is going to give us 17,500 VA. All right, next track lighting. If we went to 220.43B, it tells us that we need 150 VA per two foot of track light. So we go up here, we see eight four foot sections of track lighting. So if we take eight times four, that gives us 32 overall feet, but we're only going by every two foot of track, right? So we'll divide by two, that gives us 16 foot that we'll be multiplying by. So 16 times 150 VA is 2400 VA. Add in our extra 25% and that takes us to 3000 VA. All right, next one, sign and outline lighting. Now we don't have anything over here that tells us that we have any signs or outline lighting, but this is one of those that has a requirement in the code. If we go to 600.5a, it tells us any commercial building has to have at least one circuit for every entrance by the public. So if you have two entry doors, you need two circuits. If you have just one, you'll need one circuit. We're going to assume just one because we weren't told any differently. So we're going to put our one minimum requirement and that's 1200 watts in 220.14F. It tells us that 1200 watts is what we're going to use for that circuit. All right, so 1200 times 125% is 1500 VA. Next up is receptacle loads. So in 220.44, it tells us that we use table 220.44 for our demand factor. So first let's see what we have. It tells us we have 3,600 VA receptacle load. Okay, so that's nice. They've already calculated the VA load for us. We don't have to count up each receptacle at 180 VA a piece. They already did that for us. So we take 3,600 and we apply it to this table. And this says demand factors for non-dwelling receptacle loads. So we take the portion of receptacle load to which demand factor applies 3,600 and we take the first 10,000 or less at 100%. And if we had more than that, we take the remainder at 50%. But we don't, we only have 3,600 because it's just a restaurant. And we come up with 3,600 VA right here. So then the first 10,000 at 100% is 3,600, the full amount. Okay, now that we have all those values, so you see I have all these in bold. And these are the ones that we're gonna add up our lighting demand load, our show window track, sign and outline lighting, and our receptacle loads after our demand factor has been applied. The total we come up with is 36,400 VA. So slide that number right up here to the top of this column, 36,400. Next, we're gonna go on to our other loads. So other loads are pretty much anything we haven't taken into consideration yet, aside from kitchen equipment, and heating and cooling, which we'll talk about afterward. Over here, it tells us we have six 180 watt ceiling fans. Okay, we'll just multiply six times 180 watts and we get 1080. So we got our six ceiling fans at 1080. Next, we have three 200 watt exhaust fans. Multiply that out, we got 600 watts. We have a 16,000 watt air conditioning unit. All right, we're gonna drop that down here though Instead of putting it up here, we're going to actually list it down here because usually we'll end up comparing that to our heating later. And we'll talk about that when we get there. We have a 2700 watt hood fan and that goes right here. And again, that would not go under the kitchen equipment and I'll explain that when we get there as well, why it doesn't. And the last thing we have are two 1600 watt hand dryers. So we have 3,200 watts total for the hand dryers. 
Okay, kitchen equipment. We're going to go to 220.56 and it's going to tell us to add up all of our kitchen equipment. But it tells us we can't include any HVAC when we're going to calculate our demand for these appliances. So we can't include any space heating, ventilation, or air conditioning when we apply our demand factor. So for that demand factor, it refers us to table 220.56, which is right over here. It says demand factors for kitchen equipment other than dwelling units. And what we're going to do is we're going to find out how many units of equipment we have and then find our demand factor based on that. Well, in our case, we have a whole bunch of equipment. So we have way beyond the max of six. So if we have six or over, that maxes out our table at 65% demand factor. So in our case, we're going to add all of these together, all the ovens, toaster ovens, fry machines, and so forth. And we're going to get a total of 68,930 VA. But then we're going to take our 65% demand factor because we have six or more and apply that. And it's going to give us 44,805 VA. Now, remember, since it tells us we can't include ventilation, we couldn't put our hood fan, which normally is a kitchen appliance, but we can't include that in this demand factor. So we had to put that up here under other loads. So don't forget to do that because that'll skew your numbers a little bit if you accidentally include your hood fan in here. Okay, so our kitchen equipment demand is 44,805 VA. All right, next we're going to go to heating. Now, normally 220.51 says your heating load is at 100%, but we don't have electric heat. We have gas heating. So we have not applicable labeled right there. Going on to the non-coincident loads, in 220.60, that tells us that we're supposed to take the largest of any non-coincident load. So we've, we have two loads that do not operate at the same time, or at least are unlikely to operate at the same time, then we only have to take the largest of the two. And in most cases, it's going to be heating and cooling that have that interlock system of sorts that where one doesn't operate at the same time as the other. Not always, but usually that's going to be the case. And in a restaurant, that would have been the only case. However, in our particular situation, we don't even have electric heat, so it's a moot point. So we're just going to take 16,000 VA of cooling load. Next is our largest motor. So now we got to go through our whole building and figure out what our largest motor in the building is. Well, in this case, it's pretty evident the cooling is the largest motor. And so we're going to take that and we're going to take an extra 25% of that load. So 25% of 16,000 is 4,000. So we're going to put 4,000 VA right there. Okay, then once we have all those bold numbers filled in right here, we're going to take all these and add them together. Our 36,400 from our first column. And we're going to take all of our other loads. We're going to take our kitchen equipment demand. In this case, our cooling, because it's the largest. And 25% of our largest motor. And we're going to add all these bolded numbers together. We're going to come up with a total building VA of 108,785. Now we know our service voltage is 208 volts, three phase. So we're going to multiply 208 times the square root of three. And then we're going to take 108, 785 divided by that number and come up with 302 amps. And that is our service size. So here it is, the entire calculation all in one shot. You have it on one page. And that was my goal in making these videos up and making up this table was to have a commercial calculation all on one page. So you have all your information you need right here. And you don't have to be flipping back and forth between pages and getting confused or forgetting stuff. Um, so this should make it really simple. Okay, and to make it even easier, what I did was I took all the color or at least most of the color out of the table and gave you a blank template. And you can go ahead and screenshot this, print it out, make copies, use it as a worksheet, um, use it for studying for an exam maybe. Whatever you want to do, have at it. This is just for you guys to enjoy. Okay, well, thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Please give me a like if you thought this was helpful to you and definitely please subscribe to my channel. That'll help me push this out so more people can see it and it'll be helpful for even more folks that are looking for some help in commercial calculations. Also, let me know if you have anything else you'd like a video on. Anything I can make up, I'd be happy to do it. Um, just throw me some comments in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do about it. All right, well, thanks again, and guys, don't forget, 
stay free.